If somebody wants to understand what is going on in the Middle East, they have to understand the Jewish refugees from Arab countries. Buried beneath the headlines of the Mideast conflict is the forgotten story of the region's indigenous Jewish communities. In 1945, up to one million Jews lived in the Middle East outside of the Palestine Mandate. Within a few years, only a few thousand remained. The ancient Jewish quarters of Cairo, Damascus and Baghdad were once vibrant, bustling centers. Today, they are silent. This is the story of the thousands who fled their homes, who endured in refugee camps, and who today quietly carry the memory of a destroyed civilization. I was in Los Angeles on a business trip. I was in a hotel. And there was a young lady in her mid-twenties. And I could tell from her name and from her looks that she was Egyptian. So I said, Ana wa sahna. He said, oh, do you speak Arabic? I said, yes. And she said, uh, why did you leave um, Egypt? I said, well, I'm Jewish. He said, oh, I didn't know that there were Jews living in Egypt. And I told her the whole story. And she was shocked. This whole idea of Dimmi is permeated in Arab culture. It goes all the way back to the 7th century. I was in school with one of, one of my best friends, uh, Minyawi. We were real close. He's a Muslim Egyptian. One day we were playing in the field and he turned around and told me, one day we will slit the throat of all the Jews. I was shocked. He was one of my best friends. And I, could, I couldn't understand it. So this is the contradiction we faced at that time in Egypt when I grew up. The good times and the very bad times. The fear and the prosperity. Well, I remember um, the River Nile and the pyramids. I remember my friends and uh, my school teacher, and I remember especially the 80,000 vibrant Jewish community. One of my relatives uh, was a very well-known lawyer who drafted the Egyptian constitution for King Fuad in 1924. Now, not many Egyptian Muslims know that an Egyptian Jew drafted the constitution. <laughs> Leila Murad, she was the diva, the, the Barbara Streisand, if you will, of the Middle East, and she was an Egyptian Jewish woman who was a beautiful singer, and to this day, people are still listening to her music and absolutely love her. Most, most Arabs do not know that she's Jewish. Egypt, you know, all, all these different countries, Syria, you hear all of these instances of riots leading to torture, massacre of Jews. Al Yahud Kilab al Arab, the Jews are the dogs of the Arabs, or Idbah al Yahud, slit the throat of the Jews, slaughter the Jews. These were not only on, on posters, but the people were chanting them. And this was scary to see a crowd coming towards you, chanting, Idbah Yahud, kill the Jews. Talking about Nuremberg-type laws which criminalized being a Jew and characterized Jews as enemies of the state, which stripped Jews of their citizenship, which uh, sequestered or forcibly uh, seized their property and, and assets. Badun Rukuwa meant without the chance of coming back, a one-way trip. This is what the Egyptian government did to many Jewish families. When they kicked them out, they stamped on their, on their travel documents, Bedoun Rugur. We don't want to see you again. This is a one-way one trip. 
Well, uh, in 1948, we were uh, some 100,000 Jewish in Egypt. And now you can find there only perhaps 20, 30 old people. So we could say that uh, the, the Jewish community in, um, in Egypt is not anymore. It's finished, vanished. We left and we lost everything. We lost the business, we lost his manufacturing shop and his retail shop, and we left behind, unfortunately, a very beautiful villa with a garden uh, full of orange blossoms and, and lemon blossoms, which till now I can remember. The only thing we could take with us were a few clothes. My, I had left a very valuable and very dear stamp collection, but I did take out with me my, my Star of David. It was made by my grandfather, and the necklace was made by my father. I was able to get it out, and luckily they did search me, because if they had, the Egyptian authorities at the customs would have pulled it from my neck. In Egypt, following the Six-Day War, the government arrested all Jewish men and forced them into concentration camps. They took the 400 male Jews between the age of 16 and 60 and put them in the, these concentration camps. One of them is called Abu Zabal. And they beat them and they tortured them and they humiliated them. The things they did, I cannot say because they are so horrible. Uh, my uncle was in there and many of my relatives were included. When Israel was created, what it did was it unshackled the Jew from being under the rule and the control of Arabs and Islam. They became free and independent. And for the Arabs and for the Muslims, it is unacceptable for the Jew to be independent. Because for 14 centuries, the Jews were under them. I was really surprised myself how we did it here, because when we came, we had nothing. We were for two, two years in the Ma'barot. You know what a Ma'bara is. It's a, it's a place with a tent, which the government gave us as refugees. We were, a re I was a refugee for two years living in a tent. Imagine in the winter with the cold and in the summer with the heat. So, but what the Egyptian, um, community did here was just, um, how to call it, uh, they, they became a self-made person. The United Nations General Assembly since 1947 has adopted 687 resolutions on the Arab-Israeli conflict. 101 of those resolutions dealt with refugees, but all those 101 re resolutions dealt with Palestinian refugees only. It's astonishing to realize that not one resolution, not one of these resolutions ever dealt with the issue of Jewish refugees uh, from Arab lands. About 50% of the Jewish population today in Israel um, is made up of Mizrahi Jews, Jews like myself, who came from the Arab countries. We are the face of Israel. Anti-Semitism now in the Arab world is a hundred times worse than when I lived there. It permeates every sector of Egyptian society and Arab Islamic society. In the mosque, in the school, in everyday conversation, on television. I don't think there can ever be peace unless they can become more tolerant towards their own cousins, the, the Jews. We were so happy when Israel signed peace with Egypt. It was like a dream coming true. We couldn't believe when Sadat came. We, was, we were so happy and we, we hoped that it will continue.
with uh, the other Arab countries. We don't want to be forgotten anymore. We want to tell our story. We, we don't want our heritage, which is 3,000 years old, which is rich, to be forgotten. We want our children to remember us so that we can perpetuate the memory of all these one million Jews who were kicked out of the Arab world and who will never return. Bedoun Rugur.